is the tiles weren't done. So in the bathrooms, the tiles have now been done, which looked really, really nice. This is the smallest shower, so probably the least impressive, but I really, really like these showers, the, sorry, the tiles, because I just think they look really posh, the kind of glossiness of them look really nice. So yes, this is obviously the smallest bathroom um, and it's the ensuite or off suite even for this bedroom here. So again, not much has happened in here at the moment. Um, I think, no, that's not. I was going to say we had, um, we had to replace, not this is interesting, but we had to replace the trims for the tiles because for whatever reason, the lady in the tile shop, who is a really knowledgeable lady, she gave us 12 mil rather than 10 mil, but our Tyler was like, no, it needs 10 mil. So tile, tile trims can't be delivered by the tile people because they get bashed and whatever. So we had to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards to the tile shop to get the trims to bring them to site. So that's a lot of what we do is running around and you know basically ferrying stuff to site. Um, so then this bathroom in here, so this is bedroom B. This was the kitchen um, of the old house. It's now a bedroom, and what was the utility room becomes their ensuite. So it's a really nice big ensuite. The shower is a thousand by nine hundred, so it's a massive shower. Um, it's really nice and big. Again, they're really nice tiles. So if we then move on to the kitchen and lounge. So this will be the lounge. Um, it's got a little sort of nook there because that is the boiler in there. There was nowhere else to put it, so it had to go there. So we've got like a little corner taken out. Um, and so this will be sofa area, TV area, um, and then we're just going to have a few extra kitchen units along here just to sort of fill space. But really, it's a massive um, area for tenants to come and relax in. And then we'll come through into the kitchen. So I'm going to have a nice big breakfast bar here. So tenants can sit down and, and eat. This is gonna, so this is a bit of a thing that we're trialing. So the washing machine is gonna go in here, although now I'm looking at it, that doesn't look like that's gonna happen because the washing machine can't be on legs. So the, the plan was that the washing machine, we're gonna have two washing machines and a tumble dryer in this unit. But this is the first time I've seen this and I don't think that's gonna work. Although the kitchen supplier said that it would. I don't think you will. So anyway, I'll come back to you on that. Um, there's going to come through into this area. Is going to have two fridges, two sorry, two fridge freezers, so 50/50 split, and two oven towers, so two double ovens. Then there'll be like a mini island here, <coughs> excuse me, um, of just two units, just to utilise this space. Otherwise, it's such a big space. And then we're going to have two hobs here. And then obviously all the gaps and stuff is infilled with tenants, cupboards and all that. And then obviously out into the gardens, it's nice. Some garden don't work. Yeah. And then we've got skylights as well, just to give a bit more light and not take window space so that we can put cupboards and, and use the space better really. Um, so, oh, and then a third fridge freezer is going to go here. So, that's there. So we'll take you upstairs then. So just quickly to mention where the boiler was that I showed you before, I don't know which one I'm looking at, <laughs> um, it was going to have the water tank in there as well, but I said that was going to take too much room in that space and out here was dead space basically, it was just a massive entrance hall. So I asked them whether we could put the water tank in here and Sorry. basically it was a yes. So the water tank is in here in using up dead space. Uh, like I said, this space isn't going to make any more rent because it's just an open hallway. So if we can give more space to a, to give a larger lounge, which is more appealing to, a, to the tenants, then, yeah, it's just a better use of space, really. So, we'll go upstairs. So we go into the next bedroom. So... This bedroom before was massive, and obviously we've taken a chunk of it and given it as an ensuite here. We're going to have a lovely big walk-in shower um, here, so we're just going to have a panel of glass. This is a 1200 shower, um, and I just think hopefully when tenants come and view, 
something this big and whatever will be quite impressive um, and hopefully be quite attractive to, for tenants really. So that's this ensuite. This will obviously be the bedroom. Um, this bedroom is only going to have the bed, obviously the bedside tables, a desk and two chest of drawers because in here, which was again dead space under the stairs, you can't really do anything with it, this is going to be their wardrobe. So I think you'll agree it's obviously ample. I like the LED light they've put in. It's decent. So yeah, so we're going to put some sort of wardrobe you know, stuff in there so that they can have a massive wardrobe, loads of storage. We often get tenants who say, oh, I really do need a lot of storage because I've got a lot of stuff. So someone like that will hopefully love this room because there is loads of storage. Um, we're going to bedroom D. Again, this was the other biggest room in the house originally. Um, it actually had its own suite anyway which was quite big and we took a bit of that ensuite and gave it to the next room and then took a bit more of this room to make its ensuite for this room. So again, it's a really nice size ensuite. The shower is a thousand wide, so it's not a pokey shower by any means. Um, another use of space before the the doorways to those two bedrooms were actually back here and that one sort of was that you know 90 degrees that way so he went into that room there and actually well it was like, it was his idea we actually brought these doorways forward so that we could give a bit more space not necessarily to that one because that room's already quite big so that one didn't need it but this room specifically Again, a bit like in the other room that I showed you, we're giving this as the wardrobe for this room because essentially this was just walkway. So we took a bit of space from that, that's actually an ensuite for that bedroom, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, and we took a little bit of space from that bathroom and gave it here so that we don't have to accommodate a freestanding wardrobe because a freestanding wardrobe is quite a large piece of furniture. So now that this has got a place for it to go, what would have been quite a cramped room if we had to put a freestanding wardrobe in actually becomes quite a nice big room. So we've got obviously the bed to fit in here, we've got a desk, um, chest of drawers, and I think we've got a TV unit as well. Um, and hopefully that won't feel too cramped now. Again, this is just, an, it's just a mirror image of the one next door, so it's a thousand wide shower, um, quite a nice big um, ensuite, and we had to put in the two windows. There was one window that sort of sat in the middle of the two of them. We've had to obviously brick that up and make two separate windows because uh, everyone likes really a bathroom with a window and if you can manage it. So, this is the last bedroom on this floor. So, pretty much this is the same size as it was, the same layout. However, what was here originally was the family bathroom which we've given to this room. Um, we knocked through, that's a new door. Yeah, so we knocked through this bit, because originally you came in, basically through that wardrobe that I just showed you, that's where you came in. Um, and because it was such a big family bathroom, we didn't actually need that much space for one person's ensuite, which is why we took, as I said just a minute ago, we took this corner for mm. that wardrobe. And I don't think it detracts from, from the room at all. So we've got, I think it's a, this one's also a 1200 wide, going to be a walk-in shower. The reason that we're starting to go for walk-in showers where you just literally have a panel of glass is because when you have moving parts and obviously you have water and water build up and soap scum and all that kind of stuff, it's actually more difficult to clean. So when you've just got one panel of glass, it's really easy to clean. So where possible, we're putting these in now just basically for thinking of you know the long longevity of the product and how we keep it looking as fresh and new as possible for as long as possible. Um, so yeah, I, it's probably worth mentioning in here as well, as you can see, the window is within the shower, which isn't ideal, but it was either that or we'd have to block this up. And actually, when we looked at it from the outside and all the work that that would entail, we said, to be honest, the shower, the shower's gonna be here anyway, and yes, it might get a bit wet, but it's, everything is waterproof. Obviously, the window is waterproof, it's been tiled, so, it shouldn't be a problem, um, and they've assured me that it shouldn't be a problem. So uh, that's what we've—that's the solution we came up with in this room. 
Right, before we go upstairs to the final room, I'm just going to mention about these architraves. So when we came to site last time, these architraves were like half the size. So I think these are 750. Um, no, sorry, not 750. 75. And the other ones that were on were 40 mil. Um, and we didn't really know why the 40 mil was being put on because the other project that we'd done, we'd had this size. The style, I'd, I'd said the style, but I didn't know that they came in different sizes. And so the builders had put on the smaller ones. And we came in and we said, look, this house is it's a really big, grand house. The small ones just look a bit naff. So I obviously, they hadn't actually checked what size we wanted. And I didn't know that they came in two different sizes. So I obviously said, put the same as we put in the other property. So I did make them change them all because I said, I think it just looks naff. Um, however, when we go upstairs, you'll see because of the lower ceiling, I actually said to them, in those rooms, just keep it because it doesn't matter. Um, so obviously things happen, you know, problems come up and sometimes you need to say, no, it needs to be changed. And other times it's kind of, you know, you look. Like there was a miscommunication, wasn't there? Well, they're, they're, I didn't know that they came in two sizes. So no one asked me what size we wanted and they just mm. assumed we put the smaller one on. So, um, so yeah, so if things like that come up, we try our best to be, you know, I appreciate obviously having to change all the work that they've already done and the product is a cost to them, even though it is their mistake. So I only really ask for things to be rectified if it's totally necessary. And I did believe that it was necessary for this, but the ones upstairs, I will show you, they didn't need so much. Is it worth saying so, about the latches? Um, so, well, I'll show you in the one upstairs because okay. we're now on the ground floor. So these are the two big, big bedrooms. These are the attic rooms. Um, so carrying on from what I just said, if you have a look at these um, architraves, because of the ceiling height, actually we wouldn't have been able to put the big architraves, you know, the larger architraves on anyway. So I said to them, look, just the ones upstairs, leave as is, it doesn't matter. Obviously, you know, we'll save, save that cost for them um, up here. Um, so yeah, these are the big um, attic rooms. This room, I think I've mentioned before, annoyingly, is 0.5 square metres too small for us to have a kitchenette in this room. It is what it is. We are planning to have the kitchenette here, and you can actually see this little cute little house. We've actually got the pipe for next door, the water pipe for their sink. So this will become the walk-in wardrobe like the one downstairs. Again, it provides a lot of storage although there's already quite a lot of space in this bedroom anyway. Um, I don't know that we've mentioned already, but obviously we've got the TV points where we plan to put chest of drawers and the Ethernet cables where we plan to put um, desks and things. So it's all wide internet, um, easy for the tenants really to get a really good connection because obviously Wi-Fi and internet is really important. And then this is the ensuite for this room. Again, a thousand shower. Um, we've had to, so normally a lot of, we get a lot of feedback from our tenants that they like the showers that we put because we have an overhead shower and then one that's on like a rail and like a telephone shower. Um, but obviously with this, because we've got a lower ceiling, the, the overhead shower, I mean, someone like Ollie, who's sort of six foot, whatever, would actually be bashing their head so we've had to do away with that and we're just having in these ones a telephone shower which you know it's it's still really nice um but obviously with the lower ceiling we had to adapt what we what we normally put in so then that leads us on to the last bedroom so this is the biggest one this is the right size for us to be able to put in um a kitchenette so the kitchenette is going to go here and we're literally just going to have a 500 cupboard, a 500 sink unit, so just one of those little small bowl sinks, and a mini fridge freezer. And the idea is that a tenant can't, they can't actually do a full meal up here, but they could heat up a ready meal, or they could make themselves a cup of tea, or have some toast or something. And obviously because, one, this is one of the big rooms, it's obviously the second floor, so it's up two flights of stairs. Um, it was the idea was to give these two bedrooms the ability so they'd have to go all the way downstairs to get a cup of tea or whatever they could have it up here so yeah hopefully this room will be you know, 
quite a desirable room because it's got that extra feature. Um, and again, same as always, it's got its plug points, um, internet points and whatnot. Um, obviously, as we just said about the latches, oops, um, so these are not the latches that we normally put in. And what happened, this client, we did another project for him um, the earlier part of last year. And these keypad keyless locks, they are actually quite expensive. They're normally about, I think it's 110 pounds or 120 pounds, something like that. Anyway, I know that on certain days, Amazon do them for 75, 79 pounds. And so these came down, I think it was like 79 or 75 pounds that they came down to. So at the time, I said to the tenant, uh, sorry, to the client, I said, well, we may as well buy them for the other project. We've had six for that project and eight for this project. So we bought them at the time. Obviously, they, ha they don't come with a latch. So we, at the time, only bought the latches for the other project. And then when the client brought these to site, there was a, he obviously didn't realise or didn't remember that they needed the latches. I, because I didn't bring them to site, didn't notice that the latches weren't here. And then the builders have bought their own latches without asking any of us um, and put them on, which I don't think they look as nice as the ones that we normally put on. So we're kind of, at the moment, you know, talking whether we leave these ones because obviously, unlike the architrave, which can kind of a lot easier be changed, these have already been cut into the architrave. They've obviously already changed the architrave once. Um, and the door has already been cut to this specific latch. So I'm not sure whether we'll change them. I have bought the other latches, um, but yeah, watch this space. I, I think maybe they don't look as bad as I first thought. So we might leave them in the, in the thing of, you know, they've already been put on and again, they're gonna cost the builder if we change them all. But this is some of the things that you kind of can't, there's always gonna be some miscommunication because it's humans working with humans and as much as you can try and plan and whatever, there's always little things like this that come up. So um, again, it's about kind of trying to resolve these issues in the best way that, you know, keeps everyone sort of friends and, and all that and you know what can we what can we do about it so that was the issue with the latches again I'll sort of update you on how that goes um, and so lastly it's just this this ensuite which again is a mirror image of the other one over there same issue with the shower we're going to have to change the shower um, to just having a telephone shower on a rail because uh, tall people not like me can't have the other ones so Basically, I think that is it. Mr. Josh Cox on Facebook Live said, build the shower head into the ceiling. That's what I said, isn't it? <laughs> so why are we not doing that? I think it still came down too low. I think that was... I did have quite a lengthy conversation, but it was a while ago. With, it's with just not worth the extra cost. You know, it would be nice, but then we just decided not. Yeah. It's just simpler to put the overhead shower in. You can put it up as high as you want. You know, we, we stay in hotels, don't we? And they have the same things it's fine i think um the shower that we're putting in is the same shower as the other one it's just obviously it, the same model as the other one but obviously minus the thing so it, it should be as good but obviously just not with the overhead shower so i guess if you really want an overhead shower you won't be taking these rooms <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think that's it i think that's a fully up-to-date update of the house yep no, uh, how's the garden's getting a bit messy, obviously, but... Well, it's summer, things are overgrown. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's it. So yeah, I think that's it. So, thank you for watching or listening or whatever. Um, hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you soon.